I want to show you guys a quick system where you can damage an enemy, they'll die, they'll disappear, and it will broadcast out a message to other game objects letting you know that that enemy has been defeated. This is like a pretty staple feature in most video games, right? And it's really, really simple. I'm building this off of my five minute top-down shooter tutorial, so feel free to watch that if you'd like to set this up. But the key thing to know is when I shoot, I generate a bullet. And right here is my bullet script. So right now, the only thing the bullet does is check to see if we're colliding with something. And if we are, then we're destroying the bullet. So we're not damaging our enemies yet. I'm gonna show you how to set that up, but I wanna identify that this is where we want to tell our enemies to take damage because this is where like the bullets actually colliding with something. So depending on the game you're making, wherever that interaction of damage taking place is happening is, you know, kind of where we're gonna start. In my scene, I have a player and then I have these three red squares, which I'm considering enemies. And the only thing they have on them is a box collider 2D. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a enemy script and I'm gonna attach it to the three red squares and so say in your game, you also had an enemy script. Let's go ahead and write this out from scratch and show you the essential things you're gonna need. So we know for sure if we're dealing with enemy damage, then we need some sort of health system. And so you could have like a generic health class, but I'm just gonna put everything into this enemy script here. And so the first thing we wanna do is get a reference to a health and a max health value. So I'm gonna say serialize field, which is just a tag that will show these values in the inspector. And then I'll say float, health and I'll say comma max health and set max health defaulted to say three. And then I want my health to always reset itself to the max health every time we start the game. So I'll make a start method and in here I'll just say health is equal to max health. And so just like that we have a health system for our enemies and now if we actually want to damage it we just need to reduce this health value. So let's make another method and I'll say public void take damage and this will take a float damage amount and all we want to do is whenever this take damage method gets called we want to say hey well the enemy's health is going to reduce itself so minus equals the damage amount so if the starting health is going to be three let's say we damage our enemies with one damage at a time right so the first hit it'll go from three to two, then two to one, and then zero, right? And if it's the case where it's zero, well then we want to broadcast that the enemy has died. And we actually need to check for that here. So what we could say is if health is less than or equal to zero, then let's for now just destroy this enemy game object. Very simple. And so right now that's all we're gonna do. Very, very basic amount of work here. We have a working damaging enemy system. And so to actually have this work now, going back to that bullet script, right? We know we want our enemies to take damage when we collide with them. And so one way we can check for that is we know in this on collision enter 2D method that we're colliding with some sort of, you know, other collider in the scene. And so we can check to see if this collider has an enemy component on it. So I'm going to say if collision dot game object, and then we'll say dot try get component. We'll open the angle brackets and put in enemy. So of the type enemy, and then we want to say out enemy. And then for a variable name, we'll say enemy component. And so on the collisions game object, whatever we're colliding with, it could be an enemy, it could be a wall, it could be you know anything in our scene that has a collider on it. We'll try and see if they have an enemy game object. If it doesn't have an enemy game object, right? Like let's pretend it's a wall and we don't want to tell the wall to damage itself. Well, then we'll just destroy the bullet, right? If the bullet collides with anything, we want to destroy the bullet. So this is just gonna happen all the time. But if we do find an enemy component, well then we're just going to extract it immediately. And this allows us to say enemy component dot take damage. And I'll pass in one as the value like we were talking about before. So this will call take damage on the enemy with the value of one. So this case here where we're going three, two, one, zero is going to happen. Very simple, right? Very easy. So at this point, my three enemies all have a box collider 2D and they all have an enemy script. You'll see our health is set to zero for now, which is fine, but our max health is going to be three. And so I also added this brown wall at the top, right? So at this point, I can shoot this enemy one time, two times, three times, and then they die and they disappear. Our bullets are still disappearing. And if I shoot the wall, our bullets still will disappear, right? And so at this point, you already have a working, functioning enemy damage system. And you could stop here if you wanted to. But let's show you one more quick thing too. 
You'll notice on my screen, I have this text here, right? And this is a very simple example, but this could be broadcasted to a bunch of stuff. Let's say you had a bunch of systems in your game that manage how many enemies are alive in the scene. For example, we have this text here that's displaying how many are left. Maybe you have an AI manager that changes the behavior of the enemies based on how many are left or like what their health is, things like that. And maybe you have an audio manager that plays sounds when you get damaged or when an enemy dies or you want to spawn some particle effects, things like this. Right, my point is like there's other game objects that might care that these enemies are being killed. And so let's go ahead and broadcast cast a message out with an event that says, hey, this enemy has been destroyed. So going back to our enemy script, at the top of our script, above our variables, I'm going to say public static event. And then the type of function we want to subscribe to these events is going to be an action. And you'll see that we're getting squiggles because we don't know what an action is. So at the top of our script, we want to say using system, and that should clear it up. And then we want to pass in the type enemy with this action. And I'll show you what this means in a second. But we'll call this event on enemy killed maybe. And so we have this event. And the only thing we want to do is down here where we check to see if our health is less than or equal to zero. We want to say on enemy killed. And then we'll put a question mark so that we'll check to see if it's null or if there's no subscribers to it. And then we'll just say invoke. And so you'll see it complains because we need to provide an argument because it requires an enemy type. So we'll just pass in this. So now at this point, we're going to broadcast a message out into the ether and say, hey, an enemy has been killed. Which enemy? This one right here, this instance of it. So that's it for our enemy event. In my scene, I have this text object here, and then I have an empty game object called game manager that just has a game manager script on. And so this is my game manager script and none of this is really important. The main thing that's going on here is that when the game's loading in awake, we find out how many enemies there are in the scene. We find all the game objects with an enemy component on it. We put them in a list and then we update that text object to say enemies left and the remaining enemy count. So that's why when I start the game in the top left, it says enemies left three. That's all that's going on in that script for the time being. But let's go ahead and try and update this. What we want to do is create a method that's going to subscribe to this on enemy killed event. So I'm going to make a new method here and I'm going to say void handle enemy defeated. And you'll notice this on enemy killed event requires an action of type enemy. And what this means is that we need to have a void return type, which we do. But for an argument, we want to take in a enemy argument. And so this will allow us to actually subscribe to that event. If you had a different return type and a different argument list, it would literally complain and say you can't subscribe to the event because it doesn't match up. And so all I want to do in here is say enemies dot remove enemy, right? Because we're getting all enemies at the start of the game. And now we just want to remove that enemy from our list because we don't want to manage it anymore. And then we'd like to update our enemies left text. But we know that remove returns true or false, basically if it can find this enemy and actually remove them. So we only want to call update to this text object when we've successfully removed them. So we can just add a if block around this. And it's just a little bit better of a way of setting this up. So we'll only actually update the text when we successfully remove that enemy. All right, and last thing we want to do is make a on enable method and a on disable method because we now want to subscribe handle enemy defeated to that event. So to do this, what we can say is enemy period on enemy killed plus equals handle enemy defeated. And then in on disable, we want to do the same exact thing except minus equals here, not plus equals because we want to unsubscribe for the event when this is disabled which is just a good way to safeguard these events. And just like that, we are ready to go. So at this point, I can now shoot my enemy three times because they have three health and we do one damage a hit. So one, two, three. When it dies, it broadcasts out a message saying, hey, I died. Our game manager is listening to that. So it picks it up and then we remove that enemy from our list and we update our list count here. We can do that for these two. And you see it's working fine. So leave a comment if you have any questions, like the video if it helped out, and make sure to subscribe for more videos coming. Thanks for watching.